A Category 1 dam means that the lake has the height and storage volume of water for which improper operation or dam failure would result in probable loss of human life. Staff notes that the bulk storage structure was underwater during the 2009 floods. It became apparent that the boat shelter is in the impervious setback for the creek shown on the site plan, as well as the 100-year floodplain and the NRCS, National Resource Conservation Service, floodway easement. <coughs> the structure is approximately 65 feet from the point of rested vegetation of the stream. This necessitated an additional variance for the location in the impervious setback. Mr. Matthews would also need permission from the NRCS to allow the structure to be located in the easement. The petition was presented to the Fulton County Soil and Water Conservation District, SWCD, at their June 20th, 2012 meeting. A letter from NRCS engineer George Scovran was also presented stating that although the boat shelter is located within the flood easement, it is their opinion that the structure will not affect the safe operation and maintenance of the dam. The SWCD agreed to draft a document giving permission for the structure to remain, but with several conditions. A copy of these two letters is attached. In August of 2012, staff emailed Mr. Matthews asking for a copy of the signed SWCD letter easement agreement and reminding him of the drawings and documentation required in order to receive a variance and demonstrate compliance with the ordinance. Staff requested compliance with the following. The full, plates, full site plan showing that shows the boundary, structures, setbacks, state buffers, floodplain, floodway, district easement, elevations, contours, and other related site information. You'll need to quantify the magnitude of any impacts to the buffers and floodplain and provide mitigation measures to offset any impacts. Building plans will need to be submitted to show how the structure will be supported and tied down to prevent movement during flood. The structure must be constructed of water-resistant materials. The structure can never have walls which form an enclosure. You will be required to obtain an after-the-fact building permit and pay the appropriate permit fee, which is double for building without a permit. You'll also uh, be required to indemnify the city from responsibility for damages resulting from the construction of the boat shed. In December 2012, staff met with Mr. Matthews and reviewed the required information that was still outstanding. Staff also became aware of the ordinance prohibiting the parking of recreational vehicles in front of the principal structure of the lot. Staff amended the variance petition to include this third request and, for, and informed the applicant of the now three required variances via the register letter. Mr. Matthews submitted a revised site plan on January 3rd, 2013. While this plan had more information than the original, it did not, did not show compliance with all, the, all of the requirements. Since this information will have to be provided prior to obtaining a building permit, staff decided to proceed with the variance petition. Staff does know the discrepancy concerning the streams on the property. The letter of intent said, states that there are two streams and the site plan indicates two, including one that follows the property line. Staff was, was only able to verify one stream, the one shown in the middle of the property for GIS. The location of the center line, top of bank, and buffers are not shown on the site plan. The measurements made by staff reflect, uh, reflecting the encroachment into the impervious setback are, are approximate. Chapter 64, Article 2, Section 416.1 states that an accessory structure should be located in the side or rear yard. Chapter 14, Article 6, Section 5A2 states that no structures are allowed in the 25-foot impervious setback of a stream. Chapter 64, Article 8, Section 1481-2, states that recreational vehicles, including boats and boat trailers, are only to be parked behind the principal structure of the lot. Since Mr. Matthews' structure and boat is in the front yard, in the impervious setback of a stream, and is parked in the front yard, a three-part variance is required. We have an update um, January 14, 2013. 
Although the applicant's letter of appeal stated that there are two streams on the subject property, staff is still confused as to where these two streams are located. Unable to confirm the location of the second stream using GIS, the city arborist made a site visit to the property. He discovered a spring head approximately 10 feet from the base of the pad and the boat shelter. This means that the pad and the boat shelter were constructed within the 25 foot state stream buffer. Not only will Mr. Matthews need an additional variance from the city, the city of Milton BZA for disturbance in the 50 foot city stream buffer and the 25 foot impervious setback, he will also need a variance from the state for encroachment into their 25 foot stream buffer. The BZA cannot approve a variance for this disturbance in the city buffer until the state variance is approved. Per staff's experience with the state DNR, the likelihood of the state approving this variance is small. Um, Mr. Matthews has yet to provide staff with a site plan clearly showing the location of the two streams and their respective buffers. Following the BZA hearing, um, I'll amend this to say staff will probably issue a cit citation to Mr. Matthews for construction in the 25 foot state stream buffer, a violation of chapter 20, section 20, 568, A16. Other citations may be added pending the outcome of the variance hearing. Uh, design review board courtesy review. Um, we actually held a special call meeting um, at six o'clock this evening, and their comments um, were that the applicant should paint the roof um, the green color to um, camouflage it amongst the trees and to plant um, some kind of evergreen that will grow in the shade along the property line um, to block the view from the neighbor's uh, driveway. Additional department comments. The staff held a focus meeting on January 7, 2012 in which the following comments were provided. Building plan review. A building, structures, a building permit is required for this structure. Site plan review. Applicant must comply with the provisions stated in the August 2012 email. Arborist, no specimen trees are affected. DOT stormwater. Show mitigation for disturbance in the stream buffer and impervious setback. Standards for consideration. Um, the general considerations were read earlier and um, for the record I'll add the considerations for the stream buffer variance. When a property shape, topography, or other physical, physical conditions existing at the time of the adoption of this ordinance prevents land disturbance unless the buffer variance is granted. Unusual, circumstance, unusual circumstances, which when strict adherence to the minimal buffer requirement in the ordinance would create an extreme hardship. Variances will not be considered when, following adoption of this ordinance, actions of any property owner of a given property have created conditions of a hardship on that property. The applicant responds as follows. The structure was designed to mimic an old barn with tin roof and rough sawn lumber for the sides, blending in with Milton's horse farm theme and many existing structures of similar design and construction. The location of the structure is down an incline from the driveway and at a lower elevation from Birmingham Road on an existing pad that was installed in 2004. This location is the only area of the structure on my, for the structure on my property due to a steep incline that wraps around the property as shown on the topo map. In addition, two creeks located in the middle and back of the property eliminate the opportunity to locate the structure anywhere else. The design of the structure to blend in with the community and the heavily wooded nature of the property helps conceal the structure and ensure that the approval of this request will not offend the spirit of the ordinance or cause any detriment to the public or surrounding properties. Due to the unique nature and limiting considerations and limiting natu naturally concern occurring contours, I am confined only to this location. By not allowing the construction of the structure, the current ordinance will cause an unnecessary hardship and infringe on my right to util utilize my property. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. 
Applicant shall obtain an after the fact building permit and pay the appropriate permit fee, which is doubled for building without a permit. The applicant shall provide a full site plan showing the boundary, all structure, setback, state water buffers, floodplain, floodway, district easement, elevations, contours, and other related site information. The site plan should be signed by a registered surveyor or engineer. The applicant shall quantify the magnitude of any impacts to the stream buffers and floodplain and provide mitigation measures to offset any impacts. This mitigation should be indicated on the site plan. The applicant shall submit a complete building plan showing how the structure will be supported and tied down to prevent movement during the flood. The structure must be constructed of water resistant materials. The structure can never have walls which form an enclosure. The applicant shall indemnify the city for responsibility for damages resulting from the construction of the boat shed. No other recreational vehicles other than a boat and boat trailer should be parked under the structure or in the front yard. The applicant shall provide uh, the city a copy of the signed SWCD approval letter. The applicant shall apply to applicable parties for a variance for encroachment in the 25-foot state buffer and the 50-foot stream buffer and 25-foot impervious setback. And that concludes the staff uh, presentation. And just so you know, we also have the city engineer and uh, Arvind here with us. Please any questions. Any questions <coughs> to staff from the board? At this time, we'd like the applicant to please come forward and present. If you please state your name and address for the board, we certainly appreciate it. Yes, my name is Walter Matthews. You can call me Matt. My address is 1995 uh, Birmingham Road in uh, Milton. Um, there's there's only a couple of things. The um, well, the, the property was purchased in 2001. The elevated pad. Uh, where the uh, structure rest was uh, was put in place in 2004, when the uh, when the primary residence was built, and there, there was a little confusion, so I just want to state that the structure itself, which is a pole barn, six poles, uh, with trusses and a metal roof, was built in 2001. So. Um, 2001. Uh, 2011. I'm sorry, I just added to that. Okay. So 2001 is when we bought the property. 2004 is when the pad was built. 2011 is when the structure was built. Okay. There's still some confusion there. Oh, keep going. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, there was a part in here that said that uh, second paragraph on the background that the uh, staff notes the boat storage structure was underwater during the 2009 flood. Well, the structure wasn't even built in 2009. So I think what, what Angela meant was the, the raised pad was underwater, not the structure, because uh, again, the structure was built in 2011. So um, I've got, I haven't had a chance, you know, I haven't reviewed the site plan. I, I feel like everything except building plans have been submitted to uh, to Jimmy. Um, and and I, I believe all the information he's asking for is on there except for the hold downs, but it didn't make a lot of sense for me to go engage a structural engineer to design hold downs if, if this gets turned down tonight anyway. So. Uh, my thought on that is that would be submitted when I submit the building plans. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, building plans got no problem with that uh, as well. The letter that, let's see, top of banking buffers, uh, again, those are shown on the plans. Um, the update from January 14th, um, today was the first, uh, you know, I was notified of this about 2.30 uh, this afternoon when, when I saw the email from Angela. So, that, that's, I, I dispute that. There is not a stream there. We have, um, you know, 80 feet from a road which has a drainage ditch which runs around the structure and then comes out in this location. On the other side, I also have a, uh, a, a culvert that the driveway is across where water from the neighbor's property flows through. So you've got two, two areas during a, you know, we've had probably 10 inches of rain in the last three weeks. You've got two areas uh, are, that are putting a lot of water in this area, and that's that is not a stream. I mean, I'm no expert, but I would think if that was a state water, would it not show up on some kind of plan or a map or something? Um, but anyway, I, I didn't have time to research that because that was just 
I just saw that this afternoon. So, the other question I had, the application, the applicant responds. Um, that actually was from a, uh, that was an old, uh, I submitted a new response on January 3rd, I think it was. So that one is a little bit off because you'll notice that I'm talking about sides to the barn and stuff and there, there's no, there's no intent to put sides on the barn. Uh, the, uh, and, I, and I also address the other three variances that I'm requesting in the, in the updated letter. So I have a copy of that. I don't know if that uh, needs to be dis uh, distributed to everybody as well. So. Angela, the letter you've got in here is June 3rd of 2011, and it should be January 3rd of 2013. Um, like, like Angela said, did get NRCS approval. Um, actually had a couple of different uh, uh, engineers from their outfit that, that came out. Um, there was, you know, talk of mitigation. It, uh, I think there was, that was a requirement that I spell out. I went through that with, uh, I believe his name is Shane Blackman, the engineer, and um, he, he said that it's such a very small structure to begin with. Uh, speaking of the pad, that there's really no mitigation. I mean, it, you can't even calculate the amount of space, I guess, that it takes up um, in place of the floodwaters. As far as what was disturbed since the city of Milton was formed, it's six holes, 36 inches deep, which is what I buried my holes in with, with concrete. So um, I discussed that with Jimmy as well. And at some point he said he wasn't really concerned with the, the elevated path because that happened before the city of Milton was a city. So um, there was a little bit of confusion on my part is, okay, are we talking about the pad, which was 2004, or are we talking about the structure, which was, uh, Directed in 2011. The, um, the the contours that I submitted on my site plan give you an idea of the property. The property, like Angela said, is about 5.44 acres. Of that, probably three and a half acres are, are low land or on a steep incline. The steep incline follows the, the route of the driveway and, and, and goes around to the uh, to the back of the house. And there's quite literally, out of 5.44 acres, nowhere else to put uh, a, a structure like this. Um, I did build the structure without a building permit. I was not trying to uh, deceive or get away with uh, anything. I'm, a, I'm 80 feet off the road. I, I think, I would like to think I'm a little brighter than that if I was gonna do something. It, it wouldn't be 80 feet off of a heavily traveled road. Um, I, I grew up in a farming community. We built pole barns all the time. Uh, there's no mechanical, there's no, no electrical, there's no plumbing, there's no foundation. It's, it's not a habitable structure. It never dawned on me that there would be a building permit required or even um, any kind of inspections needed. So I did want to at least get that out there that I'm not trying to, you know, I wasn't trying to fly under the radar and, and uh, do something without getting proper permits. Uh, had I done that in the beginning, I, I probably wouldn't be here right now. But I am, so um, I think that's about the extent. I'm sure there's probably a lot of questions, so um, unless I've missed something or need to clarify uh, what kind of questions you guys have. Questions to the applicant from the board? Yes, sir. Um, prior to constructing the, uh, the actual structure in 2011, did you engage your neighbors at, at any point to see if they had any opposition to you? No, sir. No, sir. The structure is, I don't know if you can tell from the pictures, but it's its probably um, 10 to 12 feet in elevation down from his driveway. It's not visible from his house, and, and he's here if he wants to speak. But his driveway curves around, and so when he gets down, probably halfway down his driveway, in, in the winter you can see the structure. The structure's not even visible from uh, Birmingham Road except during the winter. In the spring and the summer, due to the heavy nature of the property, you can't see it. In the winter, it is visible from his property when he drives down the driveway. Um, after it was built and, and working through this process, I did talk to uh, Mr. Purdy, and um, that's kind of what we talked about at the BRB at six o'clock. He did ask that uh, some, some evergreens, lilies, whatever, uh, whatever he would like to see, or whoever, be planted along his property line. There's a, a fence that separates our property. From the fence line to the structure, it's about 147 feet. 
and like I said, probably 10 to 12 feet lower in elevation. He, wanted, he asked if we could plant, plant some bushes. Of course, that wouldn't be a problem. And then his other request was that it's got a metal uh, silver tin roof that the roof be painted green. And again, I, I have no problem with that either. Okay. Um, looking at the site plan, uh, help me understand why this um, couldn't be located in your side yard or in your rear yard, which all seems to be at the same elevation. This, this elevation drops off from the driveway um, all the way to the end and the, An elevation that, that is not shown at the house is if there's a sharp drop right about there. So the, the house is on the basement, the house is on the basement drop. Down. So there's, there's, there's a drop in elevation right there, probably. Um, well, it's 10 feet, is the basement. So again, can't get to this side, um, and then this side is, is, is heavily wooded. That's the front, and that's the side, and then this side is, um, I think, 50 feet off of the neighbor's property. And this is the, the neighbor's property, by the way, just so you guys have an idea. His house sits approximately up in this area and has a uh, winding driveway that uh, comes out about right there. So, is this a uh a drop off with a retaining wall currently along the side of your house, or is it a slope to your rear yard? It's a, it's a steep slope, no retaining wall. No. The retaining wall uh, for the house is that direction, and it stops about halfway back, and then but the grade drops off the whole way. Okay. And it kind of drops down, and then all drops down, and then, then actually starts going up the, on this side. Okay, I and didn't. En I didn't enter your property out of respect, but that, that's so that's why I'm asking for the clarification. Sure, sure. I did, did do a site visit. Thank you, sir. D did you install the concrete pad in 2004? No, it's not a concrete pad. It's gravel. Did you install that in 2004? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For, for this purpose. Yes, sir. And any reason well, why? Parking, trailers. Uh, it, I've had trailers, campers, okay. boats, all kinds of stuff throughout the getting back to them parked in this area. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. And, and I, I, the, the problem started when the structure was erected, not, not the path. And sir, you built, did you build your house in 2004? Is that when you built it? That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, you heard a number of recommended conditions that the staff recommended. Did you have a problem with it? understanding or or uh, having any problem with agreeing to any of those conditions if you like i could read them can I give me half a second okay. no problem okay. it's on I, I had made some quick notes this afternoon sure. after after i got this um recommended conditions on seven of sixteen mm -hmm. yes sir um obviously I have no problem obtaining an uh, after the fact building permit and uh, paying a double fee. Uh, shame on me, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So, absolutely not. I, uh, applicant uh, shall provide a full site plan. Um, yes, I have, I have provided that, and I'd like to sit down uh, with uh, whoever the reviewer is. Because, uh, you know, earlier in the letter they said a lot of stuff is missing, and I don't, I don't think it is. So, maybe they didn't. Uh, follow the, uh, the the contours and the legend that was on there but I would be happy to submit whatever I need to on that um, third quantified magnitude impact screen buffers um, well I don't know about that one I mean I'd be happy to do whatever I can do but the, the inspector for the NRCS said it's a, a tenth of a tenth of a percent considering the um, the uh, area the compensatory area or whatever they call it I don't know what the exact word is so how do you factor a tenth of a tenth of a percent? I don't know, but I'll get a good calculator and we'll figure out something. And then, and then the question on that is, what am, I, what am I figuring out? Is it the raised pad from 2004, or is it six 36 inch diameter holes from 2011? So with maybe a little more clarification, I'd be more than happy to um, uh, provide the magnitude of impact for that. Um, 
Shall I complete building plans showing the structure? Yeah, um, I, I touched on that earlier, absolutely. Don't have a problem submitting building plans. Um, did not want to um, go down the road as far as designing or talking to an engineer, a structural engineer, I guess, for tie downs. Just money I didn't want to spend if this gets turned down to begin with. But if, 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 the, you know, if that's a condition, then yes, I would comply with that. Uh, structure can never have walls. I've already agreed to that with the uh, soil water conservation, so that's that's a yes. Indemnify the city. Got no problem doing that. I already did that with the uh, county and the state. Uh, no other recreational vehicles other than that. That's that's no problem. And by the way, the boat's only there about five five months out of the year. The rest of the time, it's it's at the lake. Um, applicant shall provide signed copy of, and I did provide that, but I'll be happy to provide that again. Um, and Jimmy was copied on the original email from uh, Alan Tony, I think's his name. Applicant shall apply to shall apply to equitable parties for a variance encroachment in the 25 foot state buffer and the 50 foot. Well, again, the, the, the state buffer, I, I disagree. I, 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 just finding out about that today at 2:30, I, I don't agree with that. I, I'd like that. That may be the one sticking point. Um, because I, I don't believe it's a stream. I don't believe it's a state water. I believe it's a drainage ditch, just like what's next to the road, just like what goes under my driveway. Um, as far as the other, uh, you know, it's, I think Angela's letter said 65 feet off of the stream. So that's that's one of the variances to be with inside that, uh, what I understand to be a total of 75 feet. Did that answer your question? That was very long-winded. It, it did, but it also dramatized to me at least where we need to have maybe staff come up and just make sure you understand what issues are involved. I know on the site plan is one area you mentioned, which was the second one, as well as the third. It looks like you've got questions about, as well as that last one involving the uh, stream buffer that the ARPers could get up and talk about that. Because I think, you know, as a lay person, I think many of us are confused of what a stream is, but uh, there's a state definition of what constitutes uh, buffers, and there's considered a perennial and ephemeral and all these other terms that probably we hope we'd never have to hear, but in this case, it does have an impact. And that's where we would ask the arborist to kind of define that a little bit and make sure you understand and, and uh, I'm sorry if you're kind of caught off guard. It's not something that uh, many of us have to deal with because in most cases, it doesn't affect many properties, but in this case, it may. So sure. I, I may the, the defer. The secondary stream that I referenced in uh, sure. my letter is actually the stream when it when it crosses under Birmingham uh, Road there. It, it comes onto my property, and after it gets way down beyond the structure, it, it splits. Sure. And the property is so flat, um, one side of it somewhat goes down the property line, which is noted in the survey, and the other one, it, it just spills out as wide as this room. There's no defined stream in it. Right, and, and I've looked I've looked at site plans. In fact, I've had very good professional surveyors go out and look at things, but in many cases, they're not as aware of what these new definitions are. And I say new, they're three to five years old, these new definitions of what a stream is. So in some cases, uh, that surveyor may not have been as focused on that issue as perhaps he should be. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure when he was out there, there was no water, so he probably, I mean, if I saw and, him, and that's you know, And that no could be water, very well true. I mean, if I was a surveyor, I'd rather survey in the in nice dry weather than I would be if it's raining. And lastly, um, where is your septic field? Um, I noticed on the plan it really doesn't show, but that may have some limitation factors on it. Yeah, it's on the, the back. Um, that area, that, uh, it's on the back of the house, basically. The, um, the, the tank itself sits here. Okay. And the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, field, I want to say, it comes out like this. Okay. The uh, interceptor system. So, lastly, uh, I, I guess. There's two conditions that were added that are not on our, our paperwork here. One is the, the planting of evergreens along, and I and I, sorry I don't recall your neighbor's name or address, um, but uh, that would be something that would be added as far as the conditions are concerned, as well as painting the, the roof of the structure green. 
and I imagine the green we're talking about is a dark green, um, almost a black green that would blend in more closely than a bright green. And I wasn't at the meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals. and We, we didn't get into the weeds that much. Okay. Because, I mean, like your sweater, your sweater is probably more the darker version where the, the, the darker the better. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. Well, being a, being a male, I, I'm not sure I know any colors beyond green, orange, red, well, yellow. Well, camouflage, but nobody took you know. up on it. That'd be perfect. There you go. <laughs> okay. Any other questions to the applicant from the Board? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> At this time, we'd like to open the floor for public comment, if there is any. Sir, since there is no public comment, you have the opportunity to make any kind of statement you'd like to make. Anything else you'd like to add is totally up to you. Um, Mr. Chairman, can we just get the city staff sure. to clarify the, the stream just so we have a better understanding? I was going to do that as soon as he. Well, that way he can rebut. Yeah. Well, he, he's he's still, okay. Yeah, I'm Mark Law, City Arborist. Uh, I've been called out to the site this past week. Uh, initially, looking at the site plan, did not show the exact uh, width of the streams, where it went, or anything like that. I was not aware of the the second streams or whatever went through the property. Went down. Went out there last week. To look at the uh, site and appeared about 10 feet from the southeast corner of the structure appeared to be a spring head uh, there was water flowing there was base flow going from that it goes perpendicular to the stream it had a defined cut channel had base flow had the water flowing through it had clear sandy bottom and what what that's saying is that there's enough base flow to keep the leaf litter and stuff moving to keep that the base of that stream bed uh, clear. Uh, it, it looks as though, I don't know, but it looks as though that may have been dug previously. I'm not, not saying anything was wrong with that, but it looks like it might might have been uh, dug out as a drainage channel. Had that occurred? Okay, because just the width, just the location of it, the width, it's just a, uh, a consistent width and just the way it goes perpendicular to the stream. So that's, again, that's why I, I, I was thinking that might be what that was. Uh, but still, you know, the fact that it has base, uh, a base flow in it, the water flowing, and it did have it did have good movement, and the ground is just it's very saturated out there. Uh, I said I went out there before this last heavy rain. I know we did have some previously, but all around that area, there's uh, it's very soft. It's probably uh, was not delineated on the plans or anything, but uh, it appears as a large portion of that site is a wetland. Uh, I mean, the, the stream itself, as it gets well past this area the stream channel doesn't even go into the lake uh, per se it just fingers right. out it's just fat it just sheet flows so the further you get into the into the property the more saturated that that, that area gets and, and you, we, uh, today I just didn't see the stream channel at all going through there today unless it just uh, it just uh, more the floodplain since we don't have a map that shows where this so uh, and you say it's a perennial stream is that correct a perennial stream how close is the corner of the structure the edge of the structure to the stream the one that the one that I located the other day was uh, is the corner of it is about 10 feet 10 feet and so that, that's what made me think it might have been dug you know just uh, for drainage sure. and all that so. and um, I guess it, that's the closest point of course there's other parts that will probably be further away from uh, from it and uh, and it looks like, from what I've seen in these pictures, they've elevated this pad. It looks like he built a retaining wall all the way around to minimize the impact if he did get into the stream buffer, um, if that's in, in, in fact true that he did. What's the city's code for those streams? What, what do we have um, requirements for that stream buffer? The stream buffer was an additional, uh, the state, uh, state buffer is 25, the city is an additional uh, 25. So. Basically, you had, a, you had a 50 foot stream buffer, and then of course, uh, the additional 25 non impervious setback. Okay, so it's 25 plus 25. That's correct. And of, of that 50, none of that could be impervious, but we've, we're hearing that it's not impervious. It's basically. Um, um, well, well the, the, the roof. 
Uh, the rooftop would be the impervious section of that area. Okay. And w was any part of the driveway, would that also be an issue with this 50-foot uh, uh, setback? Or you didn't look at that? Is, 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 is all the drive is pervious? Or are you talking about the gravel uh, coming to the pad? Right. In other words, I'm worried that, you know, are we going to have a further issue with this driveway as close as it is? Or is it, uh, is it is it perpendicular to, in other words, I, I don't have a vision of where this creek is going. Is it going under the driveway or the, the, is the, it? The driveway, the concrete driveway is well out of that area. Okay. And now okay. you have a drainage swell that comes under the driveway. That's, right. That's strictly drainage. That kind of goes to a, a, okay. a, kind of in front of this house there. But that, okay. that was strictly just drainage. So that was, that was, that was what I would have solved. I wasn't sure if that was something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And then... Uh, if I can change topics, when they talk about evergreen shrubs and something on the neighbor's property, are what kind of sight line are you looking at for something like that when you say screening? I guess just help us help make sure the applicant understands when they say screening from the adjoining driveway. Are you looking at, you know, of course, Illy Agnes or, uh, or, or, Sully. yeah, wax, <laughs> wax myrtles or something. Uh, uh, I think you'd want something that uh, looks pretty natural to that area. Uh, okay. So your eastern red cedars would really look, uh, look, look blend in well in that area. Uh, nice evergreen, shrub-like. There are other kind of hollies, upright hollies you can put. So uh, a diversity of upright evergreens will give it that natural look. And okay. planted staggered instead of a uh, single row. Okay. Mr. Go Chair? Go ahead. Uh, I have a question to piggyback on that. Rather than species, can you help us understand location of screening that would be required? Would it be all three sides? Um, would it be just one side? If the if the concern is from the neighboring property, I would just uh, probably have to uh, meet with him, discuss that with him a little bit too, and see where he ex exactly his concerns are. So we'd be looking at from his drive or his property as you're going down. So it could just be a small piece. It could be a but I don't think you'd like looking at screening the entire thing. I think you'd be looking at just screening his view as he's uh, exiting his property. I don't okay, think. The reason, that, well, there was a different neighbor here at, at an earlier meeting who, who also voiced some concerns. Um, it's about part three of the, of the fact that this would be for a uh, boathouse, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, screening from the street as well. So it, it, it theoretically could be more than just one side. Right, right, and you're going to be a little more limited in what you can plant in that area because uh, it's, it's already just heavily vegetated. So you got a lot of trivet, you got a lot of maples, uh, I'm not even sure what else out there. So the best way to mitigate that from a visual standpoint may be the painting of the roof that I think was also on I'm sorry, what's that? Painting of the roof is, was something right. mentioned to mitigate the visual impact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just go right ahead. Um, sir, what... Uh, only because the applicant asked, what's the legal definition of a stream? There are several different methods. I'm talking about a whole brochure there that can. Uh, but Should I go to my car and get one real quick? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, got, I got pamphlets in my desk in there. Two but, minute version would be good. Pardon me? The two minute. Well, basically, what we look at is, uh, like I said, some of the uh, uh, things you're looking for is the base flow, where you do have the uh, water movement, movement of the water through the stream. You have a sandy, rocky bottom. Again, that's mm -hmm. where. The water has been moving to keep that bottom clear of any leaf litter or anything like that. You have defined banks, a defined cut channel, and that was obvious out there, and rested vegetation. Rested vegetation was a little more, uh, not it's typically what you see in a lot of areas where you get a lot of ferns and stuff like that, but you did still have the plant life, the trees, privet, and all that growing, growing along the bank side there. And are the banks that you refer to, are they naturally designed or they, or they, can a stream become man-made designed as well? Well, that's what I was inquiring. Uh, uh, the stream, it could still be man-made and still be considered uh, state waters. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, if, uh, if, if, if it's got water flowing, I mean, uh, even a concrete uh, channel could still be considered a stream, even though that was man-made. Okay. Thank it's you. Just where, it's just where the source of the water is coming from. Right. Any other questions for staff? So staff includes counselor if we have a question. Sure, okay. absolutely. Um, so I, I'd just like to go on record to say this is a pretty small problem, I think. I mean, a 10 by 10 pad, um, small streams. I mean, 
mean, it seems like something we should we should we should approve. But am I understanding, Council, that, that there's a some issue with violation of state law with this? And I'm wondering about our jurisdiction. Yeah. Well, that's if if there is a stream, and if it is 25 feet at the structure, that that is an issue that we would not be able to resolve just by granting a variance. Now we have provisions which we would also need to satisfy um, and be, grant a variance in addition to the state level, but the state the state would also have to. Yeah, I suppose we're going to approve that. In order to in order to keep it, he would have to have permission from both. And who would go first? Well, we're, the, I guess we're talking about two different streams. He can, he can approve the variance. He's okay with, we'll say, stream number one. But then the new stream we've discovered, stream number two, he'd have to get the state variance first and then come back to get another variance from you all. Okay. So we can and put this, conditions around that in our and at the uh, state. Well, that's what that last yeah. condition is. Right. And if the state denies, he would, this, he would be mandated by the state to remove that structure. Basically. So you can't approve right. the variance if the state denies it. And in some cases, you're going to do more disturbance just removing it than you do just keeping it. So there's, they also look at that. It's not always a, a cut dry case. Because when you do remove it, what are you damaging? And there may be a cer certain situation where they come back and ask for recompense and uh, do some modifications to the stream. So uh, that's another option. So, uh, and there, I did, we did read it. It's unlikely that the state will grant permission. Just from the conversations I've had with staff that have, you know, been at this for okay. longer than I have. Just seems like a minor deal. You know? okay. I've got a question for the uh, engineering group for Jimmy Sanders to clarify his issues. So again, I feel like he had some questions about the survey as well as the calculations necessary to prove the flood issues. I, I don't, I guess from what, what I'm hearing is the plan doesn't meet it, and, and this is a good case where the stream isn't shown. So are those some of the issues you're, you're concerned about, Jimmy? Uh, right. Unfortunately, the plan that was presented to us didn't show this, this area. And just so you, that you know, we have made a determination that it is state water. Okay. And to give you a definition of the, of the stream and what we're trying to protect, uh, state waters is any water surface and subsurface that moves from one property to another. So that doesn't mean you have to actually see the water. It can actually be subsurface water. Okay. So we have perennial streams, uh, intermittent streams, and ephemeral streams. And in this case, this is not even a, one where there's any question to it. Uh, it actually has base flow that Mark was talking about, it has rested vegetation. Uh, the determination made by staff is that this is in fact state waters. It does require state waters variance. We cannot give them a building permit until they have a state waters variance from the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Council, I have a question. Would we be better off to defer this until he meets with the state? I don't know what you mean by better off. I mean, it would, I don't, from, from what I've heard, I don't know that everything would be resolved uh, by a decision, at least granting it. I don't think it, he, it doesn't sound like he would have permission, you know, going forward. He would still need to take further steps. And it's up to you whether you take it piecemeal or delay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. When it, when it comes to a, a variance from the state, uh, first of all, before that can happen, the first thing it has to do, the, the city has to actually send a, a letter to the state that says that we're aware that the applicant has made the application for the variance. And in, the, in, and in that letter, we would have to state that, uh, that the structure was built without a building permit and that typically when the state gets this type of a variance, they generally require that it be removed before they even consider their variance. So that's why I say it's kind of highly like, unlikely that they would actually grant an after the fact variance for a scenario where, and the main thing is, can it go anyplace else? From the state's perspective, it probably can. But we don't know that because we haven't actually gotten any kind of alternative plans. I haven't seen a mitigation plan. Now, when we talk about mitigation, we're talking about 
multiple different types of things. The compensatory cut and fill that we were talking about, the reason that NRCS felt like that was kind of minimal was because you have to look at the extent of what this area would be flooded during the flood, which is about 12 feet. So when you talk about recompense and storage, we're down in the floodplain so far, it doesn't really matter. But when it comes to water quality and what we're recompensing for under the stream buffer limits, we're talking about uh, how do you treat that water that runs off of the impervious surface, which is the roof. And there's several ways of doing that. You might build a, an infiltration pit. You basically take the water and you treat it before it gets back to the stream area. But I haven't seen any of that either. I guess the point is, is that uh, to back Angela up, uh, we haven't actually seen a, a complete plan yet. Mr. Chair, sure. Jimmy, have, have you and the applicant been in, in, in direct contact with these open items? Yes, we've discussed these. And in fact, uh, we, we, we put it in writing and we did that last year. Okay. Um, one, one thing that strikes me is, is being missing and obvious from this plan is the actual size of the pad and the size of the roof structure itself is not noted anywhere in the documentation that I've been able to Well, there's a, on the site plan, it shows the square footage of the pad. Where do you see that? I think that's well, what that is. It says new shed pad equals 979. No, that's the elevation, isn't it? That's the elevation. Yeah. How, how big is the pad? I'm not sure. It's not the I thought it was like 10 by, it looked like it's it was like 10 by. Well, the boat is 20 feet plus. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 it was Just. So you, you don't know when you come back up, I'm going to ask you that so we have that understood. So, so see, I don't have a quantification of how much of it is in the state water buffer, how much of it is in the sea buffer, how much of it is in the impervious buffer. And then and we have to look at that and we'll see what type of mitigation you need to do to offset that. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Jimmy, you feel like you've explained well enough so he might better understand or? or just make reference to that letter is what you're really saying? Well, I've talked to Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews has told you himself that he really doesn't understand all of these issues. I, I would suggest that Mr. Matthews hire a professional, and I'd be glad to talk to him and explain those to him. And, we can probably and I agree with you. It, it's complicated, and mostly people don't understand what you're asking for, because I know I've had this same conversation with people when I've reviewed plans. And, try to get them to understand. So I think Mr. Matthews, that's a good bit of advice he's offering is sometimes, uh, you know, what do they talk about attorneys? If you represent yourself in court, uh, and, uh, and that's where you may, may not make as good of attorney and same thing with engineering sometimes. Um, and I understand what Jimmy's asking for. That's why I wanted to ask him to come up and clarify a little bit and also ask the arbors to come up and clarify because you had two questions about the recommended conditions and uh, um, I just want to make sure you're aware of why the staff's making that condition or the city's making the staff uh, recommendations. Thank you very much, Jimmy. You do a good job for us. You uh, too as well. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, and in the encroachment agreement, which I think you have a copy of, um, it states Structure footprint is 12 by 26, and the pad is 16 by 30. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We try to estimate it because there is a scale on the map, but the, the map's been reduced in size, so the scale probably doesn't work very well anymore. Any other questions for staff? And the, um, the big one it should be is scalable, the larger site plan. Okay, yeah, scalable. yeah. yeah. Ma'am, you had left the room when we did public auction. Are you here to make a comment about this application? No, about okay. Uh, my name. Thank you. Just, okay, just, we just, just wanted to make sure. sure. You're certainly welcome. Any other questions for staff before we ask the applicant to come back? Sir, if you could come back up and, and answer a few more questions, and then we'd certainly appreciate it. Mr. Turner, go ahead. Angela, staff has clarified okay. my question. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Would you like to make a closing statement, sir? Yeah, I mean, 
I absolutely respect what Mark Mark said and and Jimmy as well. Uh, but I can go out there and I've got two ditches on both sides of this structure, one from the road, one that goes under my driveway. Both have flowing water, both have defined banks, both have sandy rock bottoms. The whole three and a half acres down there has a sandy rock bottom. Um, and they both have rested vegetation on the sides of them. So I, I realize he's probably much more of an expert than I am, but those, those are the four things I picked up. I did pick up, Jimmy said that they can be underground and Obviously, I can't pick up what's underground, but anyway, so that, that's all I had to say about the stream. I, I still do not agree that that is a stream or state water, and, and I, from what I understand, that Jimmy has the authority to, uh, to uh, make that call. Uh, but anyway, I got two ditches, one coming off the road, one coming from the neighbor's property that are exactly as he described, and, and I don't consider those streams. Um, the other question, one of the other things I have with Jimmy is, you know, he's talking about treating water off of the, the roof runoff. And uh, I'd probably treat it the same way y'all treat water that runs off y'all's house. I'd put it in the gutter and just let it go. I mean, it, you know, we can, uh, I'm in commercial construction. I've been in this for 20 some odd years. Uh, I know how to read plans. I, I, I know how to read civil plans. Um, I feel like everything that Jimmy has asked for is on this plan. And I would like the opportunity to review this plan with Jimmy. Uh, because this, uh, um, in our reviews, he has not seen this plan. This plan is not available in full. So, uh, but again, if it takes engaging an engineer, a professional, as Walt suggested, um, I'm, I'm fine with that too. It, it certainly sounds to me like the biggest hurdle I got is the state water thing, which um, I can assure you, I, I can assure you, it, it only runs after heavy rains, which we've had the last three weeks. Does that make it a stream? Maybe I, I don't know. But the ditch runs during heavy rains too. So. Um, that's that's kind of it, uh, unless uh, unless you guys have some other questions. I, I do want to respond to one point that you made, which is you would like to engage with staff to clarify whatever concerns you have or that they have. Um, this case has been open for over a year. Mm -hmm. And this plan, as, as it's been revised, is dated 6-1-2012. Uh, understanding the magnitude of what we are trying to decide, and, and out of respect, really, for the city's uh, resources, mm -hmm. why haven't you taken proactive steps to do that before well, the, want things to do so now? Sure, the, the, uh, the conditions that Jimmy spoke of, when, when they, I had actually, after uh, getting the letter signed by the uh, uh, SWCD or NRCS or whatever it is, um, I had sent him actually a copy of that and, and sent another email address to Jimmy saying, hey, I, I do not use this email address anymore. So there was a period of, Angela, two, maybe three months where he had sent that to the other email address, but not to mine. Um, it was by pure accident that I did check the old email address and saw he had sent something. So I then forwarded that to my husband. So that will help you understand a little bit of the well, delay. Well, th this, this encroachment agreement was dated, I think, September 12, 2012. And again, my question is, why haven't you taken proactive steps to meet with staff? Well, I mean, I forwarded that over to him. And then when, he's, when I finally got the conditions, okay, this is what else we need to go on this this civil plan. Um, I've had the surveyor out there three times. So it, like the stream that they found yesterday, it, it kind of seems like one thing after another, one thing after another. So as issues or questions or concerns or requests are made, I, I try to address them and chip away. But at the same time, it seems like every time a request is made, there's something else made after I comply with that request. Well, yeah, I think you can see now in hindsight that this is a very complicated site issue with complicated issues. Um, um, so in hindsight, I'd have never built the structure. I, but I, I suspected did, that would be And now I'm here, and i got to see it to the end until it's approved or y'all make me take it down. So, uh, you know, I, I really, really don't want to do that. But, yeah, I, I, I apologize for not getting the building permit. I would not be here had I done that. Uh, honest mistake. I didn't realize it was me. But here we are. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
At this time, we would like to close the public hearing, and the floor is open for a motion. Chair. Yes, sir. I'd make a motion to deny case B11-011 to allow an accessory structure to be located in the front yard to allow a structure to encroach into the 25-foot impervious setback of the stream, to allow a boat and boat trailer to be parked in the front of the principal structure of the lot. Do we have a second? I'll second it for discussion. Discussion. We have, if you, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Um, we have four considerations for our variance, as we all know. Um, and I don't feel the applicant has sufficiently made a case um, showing that he's uh, uh, not offending the spirit or intent of this three-part variance. I mean, it's the spirit and intent of the variance, for example, on the boat is to not have a boat in the front yard. And in the end, there's going to be a boat in the front yard if this is approved. Um, that there's extraordinary and exceptional situations pertaining to the property. Based on the plan that he's provided here, I don't see why this couldn't have been located somewhere else uh, on the property, so it's not requiring a variance. And as far as detriment to the, to the public good, uh, not only has the neighbor spoken with some concerns, neighbors, I should say, have spoken with concerns, some of which may be partially mitigated through screening, um, the other, which is the street, which, as it stands right now, it's it's quite visible in the in the fall and winter time frames. So I see three of the four, which I don't believe the applicant is sufficiently addressed um, as far as our considerations are concerned. And the, and the, the, the last and most concerning is the spring head being so close in the state waters. I think we owe it to the applicant the applicant to make a clear decision versus stringing him along to then pursue the state to, to then come back to this board. I think we need to give him some clear direction on the uh, pleasure of this board and the city. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second to deny V11-011 to allow an accessory structure to be located in the front yard to allow a structure to encroach in the 25-foot impervious setback of a stream and to allow a boat and boat trailer to be parked in front of the principal structure of the lot. All those in favor of denial, raise your right hand. All those against denial, raise your right hand. Did not pass. We need another motion. Sure. Hold on, let me and forgive me, just I'm looking for the page with all the conditions. There we go. You're gonna do it, Chris? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll I'll do it. All right. Then somebody second. Let, then let's. Yeah, I will. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to vote that we approve um, V11-011. Um, to allow for an accessory structure to be located in the front yard, to allow a structure to encroach on the 20-foot impervious setback of a stream, to allow a boat and a boat trailer to be parked in the front of the principal structure of the lot with the following recommended conditions from staff. Uh, can I simply say all these? I, 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 would, I would say, you can, can you do that, can, Council? Just to read them all? Can we read they them? were read into the record. Page 7 of 16, Correct. Like, something like that. In a, and then in addition to the two uh, recommended con additional conditions that were brought up verbally tonight, that the roof be painted a green color and that uh, vegetation is planted along uh, the neighbor's property to the west. Um, Mr. Matthews, west. I would, I would yes. like to Any, say anybody? To yes, arborist. thank you. Um, uh, to, uh, to block the view from the neighbor's uh, western property. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, to cover one of the conditions, can I ask if the uh, indemnity condition be uh, amended to include uh, the language such uh, 
the applicant should indemnify the city from responsibility for damages resulting from the construction of the boat shed and then add in a form satisfactory to the city attorney. And I say that again. In a form. <laughs> Good luck with that. In a what? In a form satisfactory to the city attorney. Do you want him to reread that? I think if he. I, that's great. If he can agree to that and get the yeah. second to, to agree as well, you can. Appreciate. Nancy? Nancy, do you second? Yes, second? I, I second. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Discussion? If I may. Yes, sir. And I recognize, I think, the frustration that we've all had with this issue that's been on the docket now for what seems to be an internal amount of time. Um, I think there have been a series of contingencies that the, the applicant's been asked to do. Um, while this does not give any finality to him because he's got to go in front of state, bluntly, I, I, in going past the property, looking at it with these particular conditions, I don't believe it, it violates the, the spirit of the ordinance. It's set back off the road. Yes, we can see it today because of winter. I get that. Um, but I think the other nine months out of the year, six months out of the year, whatever it is that we have leaves, it's really not visible. Um, I can't speak to this, this secondary stream. It's also known to be up to the state, um, that, how they determine it. From, but from our standpoint, particularly mine, I don't see this violating what we're trying to achieve here in the city of Milton. Yes, sir. Coincidentally, and to your point, the boat is parked there in the winter months. And therefore, it is visible then throughout all the fall and winter months, because um, that is the intended use of the structure. Understood. Um, and there's no there's no easy way to mitigate that um, with uh, with painting the roof different color or even screening the neighbor. You're still going to have visibility to that from the street in the winter months. You you will, but at the same time, speed limits. Forget about what people actually do on Birmingham Road. Speed limit is 45. That is at a low point in that road. You are crossing a bridge or coming down off of a hill. The you've got to look for it to see it. And and I agree with you. And I, I understand your point. Um, but I mean, I, 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 the I, second I, point that I'll make is knowing that, it, that based on the staff's recommendation that this is within uh, the setbacks of the state waters. Right. I don't see why we would send this applicant down that path of incurring additional expenses when we, we it's the city won't be comfortable with that um, outcome and the state is going to have as we suspected to have issues with that well but i i'd like to give he's going to come back before us right, yet again he, he will and, and uh, bluntly i'd like to give mr matthews that opportunity of success and 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 if he want if he chooses not to, to pursue that and removes the structure that's his choice but from our standpoint i'd like to give him that that option and, and let me just make one last point to your, to your earlier one. Uh, I live on Birmingham Road. Not in the I live on Birmingham Road. I have to look for this thing in the winter to be able to see it. And I pass by it every day, multiple times a day. And I, I understand that's winter, and I get that, but I still have to look for that boat. Mr. Chair, I have a question for um, your staff. Sure, go ahead. As it relates to acceptance or denial, um, Counselor, is... Um, is there a, a way that we should be making recommendations, with, I don't know if there's the right terminology, with or without prejudice, that would allow this applicant to come back before us? In this case, he's going to have to come back before us with another variance application, and is that going to be another new application in fee? As, as things stand at this point in time, yes. He, this will cover, address the issues, the three issues that are before the board tonight. That based on the city's determination it will require an additional variance in order to remain where it is um, it will not be in compliance even if if this board approves a, a, the current motion um, they, they will have to get obtain an, another variance it so will require an additional let, application let me, ask, fee. let me ask a question then to to your point if i may are we serving the applicant, forget about the city just for a moment, because I recognize there are some, some issues there, but by deferring this versus, and we'll, to allow him not to resubmit a new application and new fees. That's why I asked that question. Yeah. Or is he going to have to do that regardless no. of what we do tonight? Not if we defer it. 
it, if, if it were deferred and amended and re-noticed and republished for different um, variant or for additional variances, um, that's the path. Actually, this has taken, I believe, already at least once um, in, in identifying additional variances. That would that would not require an additional fee. Okay. That's where I see. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Right. Yes, sir. Um, like uh, like we heard from uh, Chris, I agree. I I've looked for this three times. In fact, I gave the ultimate in, in the test, which is my wife. I said, "Honey, can you find something over there?" And she said she could not. So um, I didn't tell her what she was looking for, but uh, I kind of asked her something off the road, a boat or something, and, and I said, okay, look. So I, again, I'm saying, you know, what, what, what are we fighting here? And I'm kind of also agreeing that I think the uh, chance that it's going to have to be torn down and moved is probably 85 to 95 percent anyway, but it's up to the applicant to go down that battle. We all learn. Life's a, a learning lesson. We learn how we do things wrong, and we suffer the price for doing things wrong. Uh, sometimes we we learn from other things. So uh, this may be a learning exercise, and uh, Mr. Matthews may gain this in helping him with his further construction projects to look out for stream buffers in the future. So we never know why God puts these challenges in front of us. But uh, in this case, uh, if uh, if it's something where I see his neighbor here, his neighbor didn't complain, didn't come up, Seem like we've come up with some kind of a resolution. I, I, I'm of the opinion that uh, I think we can work it out and uh, and move along. So, uh, and I'm also going to definitely defer to the person who lives on the street, uh, who uh, would uh, catch the wrath of all his neighbors if he doesn't uh, make them happy. I live next door. I just live up the street. Any other discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve to allow an accessory structure to be located in the front yard, to allow a structure to encroach in the 25-foot impervious setback of a stream, to allow a boat and boat trailer to be parked in front of the principal structure of the lot with all the recommend, recommended conditions on page 7 to 16. With the addition, it should read, applicants shall identify the city from responsibility for damages resulting from the construction of the boat shed and to form satisfactorily to the city attorney and also to paint roof a green color and plant vegetation to block view from neighbor's property per city arbors. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Pass five to two. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs> you do too. No. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck with the stage. Yeah. Seems like a shame we gotta go through that exercise. Our next case is B12-017 to a, allow a barn to be located 25 feet from the rear property line. Angela, will you please present? Okay, so B12-017 allows a barn to be located 25 14035 Cotworth Road is located in the Summit View Farm subdivision. The lot consists of approximately 3.3 acres and is zoned AG1. It is located in the Northwest Fulton Overlay. The property includes a house. Um, there's a pool. Yes, there's a pool. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Pool and concrete pool deck and a bar. The owners, Elizabeth and Claude Gervais, want to demolish the existing 36 by 36 barn and rebuild it in the same location. They state that the original barn was not built to code and that it has several major issues which makes it unsafe for their horses. These issues include the ceiling height at eight, at eight feet is too low, the structural posts have deteriorated because they were installed in the ground and not a concrete foundation. There is a fire hazard due to exposed electrical wiring the wash stalls do not appear to be connected to the septic system. And the two by six studs that frame the exterior walls are, har are horizontally installed rather than installed vertically to help support the roof. 
The barn is located 25 feet from the rear property line. They want to build a new and slightly larger barn approximately in the same location, would be 44 by 44. The rear or east side of the barn will be located at the exact same distance from the rear property line as the existing structure, approximately 25 feet. Evergreen trees will also be planted between the barn and the east property line. Section 4, <coughs> 1602B1 states the rec that cut and paste. Um, it's supposed to state that any structure housing animals should be at least 100 feet from any property line. I apologize for that. General 8, 2012, the DRB offered the following comments. Um, the applicant should consider a metal roof and add evergreens behind the barn for screening. Additional department comments. Um, staff held a focus meeting on January 7, 2012, in which the following comments were provided. Building plan review, site plan review, the arborist, DOT stormwater, all had no comments. Standards for consideration were read earlier, and the applicant responds as follows. We believe that the existing barn is not structurally sound nor safe for horses. There are no other locations on the property that meet the setback requirements for equestrian facilities in Milton, which is 100 feet from adjacent properties, and do not encroach upon the existing house, pool, or leaching field. We believe that the proposed plan would not only fit, but enhance the look and feel of the equestrian neighborhood of Coward and Summit Road. Recommended conditions. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. A mix of evergreens between the barn and the eastern property line. Planning is to be approved by the city arborist, and the new barn should be a maximum of 44 by 44. This concludes, this concludes the staff presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Two staff from the board. Yes, sir. There's a condition uh, for uh, plants to be placed along the uh, Eastern property line, and I'm just trying to make sure I've got my. And um, why I bring this up, if you look at the aerial picture in that area, everyone pretty much has wide open spaces between all the properties and again having owned horses I just hate to put my animals where they're having to deal with other shrubs and eating other shrubs and I want to maximize my Bermuda and and have things grow it's overlooking a riding ring and uh, I would think that you know unless you're gonna put graffiti on the wall of the barn I'm not sure why it would matter to screen it I understand the intent would be because you're putting it closer, but I'm also the opinion that, you know, this is a pasture area and you're just creating more issues with trying to make sure you don't plant something that your animal's going to have to do. Um, um, so I, I just ask that question. Why, why is the planting uh, being requested there? I think that was actually a, an option from the Okay. Any other questions to no. staff no, or the no board? Problem. That's the only question. Anyone else? At this time, we'd ask the applicant to please come forward and present. If you would state your name and address, we'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, Claude Gervais, address is 14035 Coward Road. Um, the idea, just to address your question about the trees, that was an agreement we made with the rear neighbor, Liz Hass, over there. Um, you know, should we ask since it's we're going to put a new barn there, and it's pretty close to her property line. To put some trees in between the barn and her property line, not necessarily all the way down the property line. That wasn't her request. It was just so she's not. It's it's screening the barn a little bit from her house. And that was the main purpose of that. 
Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, we, you know, we, we have met with the arborist, and um, the barn that we're looking at putting up will be a much nicer barn that's on there today and a much safer barn. Um, it's not going to be that much larger than the current barn that's on there today. And we're looking at expanding a little bit to make a little, the stalls a little bit larger. They're currently 12 by 12 stalls, and we'd like to have um, some 12 by 14 stalls and a little bit more room for grain and so forth. So we're looking at expanding it just by a couple feet, not getting any closer to the property line than it currently is today. Um, and the other locations on the property don't work. The uh, only other area that would work would be in front of the house, but that's where our leaching and septic system is, so we'd have to remove that if we wanted to put it there. And we've met with all the neighbors. Um, they've all signed a letter that should be in your packet there that they are in agreement with the principles of what we laid out. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions? Yes, sir. So, uh, as far as the trees are concerned, uh, I, I always like to make sure because when you talk about a screening of a barn, you could be looking at a couple thousand dollars worth of plants. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want to make sure, you know, what my idea of a screen is and, and staffs and everyone, I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, if we're talking about a tree or two. I think that's a big difference than a screening, and I think I just caution you uh, because, as you heard the arbors talk about this last case, well, to screen it properly, you're going to need a double row, you're going to need evergreens, you're going to need this, and it could be something much more than what you imagine. But, but uh, I, I just, you know, yeah. I mean, we, go ahead. If you give us just, just a, give us just a second, we'll, we'll call you. Yes, sir. I Go have ahead. two questions. Um, one question is what, so the 100, 100 foot provision is, is for visual as well as for um, odor. And that's, that's why it's in the Can you tell us what, your, what provisions you're making for waste? Uh, we're going to have a dump trailer there, so we will actually put manure on a trailer and ship it off every week, so we will not stay on the property. <coughs> um, thank you. And secondly, um, what is there a certain color scheme? I didn't see anything in the packet regarding. Yeah, I didn't know if that was part of the variance of the building permit process. Um, but we were going to try to make it look similar to the house. We were gonna, the house is mostly brick and then some hardy plank siding. We were thinking about putting a, like a, uh, a four, three to four foot bricks around around the foundation, and then from there have hardy plank siding going up along the side. So it should look similar but to the again, house. Again, color scheme. You're looking at muted colors. You're looking at white. You're, uh, we haven't decided that. I think we wanted something similar to the house trim, which is like a beige. Okay. But I don't think we finalized that. Okay. Not too particular about. Well, it. I'm just trying to get that out in the open mm -hmm. while we've got your neighbor here, so that yep. if there are concerns, we can address those. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, ma'am. If you'll come forward and state your name and address and make your public comment, we certainly appreciate it. Of you. Nice to meet some of you. Um, 1385 Summit Road. Um, as a horse person, I have absolutely no problem with improving a barn. Um, introducing more horse people to our community is an asset to our, um, our community as well as a neighbor. Allowing an improvement of a horse barn is totally within the future of Milton. Um, uh, and we are not in an argument, and we only ask that a few things be um, looked at. One is that the barn not be any taller than it currently is, as it's a bit of an eyesore because it is only 25 feet from our property. Um, that the barn be limited to three stalls, as is the acreage is only three acres, and that is within the um, current um, law of whatever the rules are that one horse per acre. Um, again, it does sort of inhibit our, I mean, our privacy is a bit invaded, and that's why we discuss the um, use of screening. Um, so we ask that our neighbor use that area between the 25 feet between the barn and my property. Um, that there is no storage structure or anything other than green space between the barn and my property. I would also request that the neighbors set aside a dollar amount to be used 
to purchase the natural tree bushes to buffer. Um, my request would be for $2,000 for the natural improvement. Uh, we are not concerned with the color. We are also not concerned with the manure. Um, I don't know how many horse people there are here, but as horse people, we, we don't want any more manure than you do. So um, that is not a concern for us. Ma'am, I think, uh, hang on, we, yeah, I, go ahead if you have a question. I've got a couple questions. The, the number of stalls, I'm sure you don't really care if they put six or eight in there because there may be some stalls that are, are basically used for washing and there may uh, be other no, stalls. I, do, I are, absolutely do care. Absolutely but, do care. But there's a difference between a wash stall well, interesting. and a stall that is for a horse is overnight environment. The wash stall right. So what nice. you're saying, you're trying to restrict the number of night stalls, not necessarily the number of stalls. Actually, I'm not restricting. Um, it is already the rule that in My our area, it's three we're acres, only eight. allowed to have one horse per acre. Right. So my thought was is that we um, request that there only be three stalls um, because there is only three acres and it's just not wise to overload an acreage and then cause problems that we don't, we don't want to have. Right, but I know one of my neighbors uses one of his stalls for putting in some of his chickens and roosters in, and uh, I mean I know, I know I it's crazy. Don't agree and with that. I mean I'm okay. sorry that he puts chicken and roosters in a horse barn, but that's probably not what I would sure. to have next to my farm. And and the uh, screening, you're you're talking about screening, and I'm I guess I'm always worried, you know. Um, uh, let me address what you said earlier. Um, I sure. totally agree with what you're saying. Um, however, the area that we're discussing is not a pasture area for the horses. It would be just a buffer zone that would not include horses to be pastured upon. So they have a pasture on one side and a pasture on the other, and then the back of the barn, it's about, um, Well, I understand. That's why I'm trying to trying to understand um, because because I've been involved with our arborist, and when we talks about screening, you know, he could be asking for a line of evergreens going along the complete property line. No, that I would be two rows. That would be, you know, eight foot on height, which would be a couple thousand dollars more than what you're talking about, two thousand. Um, and that's why. Sure. We need to be more specific. I know. That's what I'm trying to so, figure out is yeah. how to how to put yeah. that into something that makes sense and seems no. reasonable. Because so you're all, all you're trying to do is get something to break up the visual of the of the the back of the barn, not necessarily the side of the barn. I mean. Right. I mean, the, the, it's it's not very private. Um, as right. It is. Therefore, going forward, if, if this barn is allowed, I thought it would be best for both, for everyone, that we have some screening. And we have something natural that is not in a horse pasture. Because like you said, in a horse, and I, I already spoke to them about, I was like, I could put a screen up in my horse pasture, but that, that messes up our horse pasture. Sure. So the, the portion behind their barn would not be pastured. So, um, that area, um, we do need to figure out what that size is, but I think about $2,000 worth of planning would probably be enough based on just eyeballing it and knowing a little bit about um, planting. Um, I did have one concern. I didn't know, know about the 44 by 44. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And that, that was in the letter. larger in terms of this way, but I don't want it any taller because it's already a bit of 
um, uncomfortable for, for us, um, being only 25 feet from our property. Um, so, but I... Sure. Ma'am? Hi. Uh, three questions for you. Okay. And I will acknowledge up front, I'm not a horse person. You're not a what? A horse person. Oh, that's okay. Doesn't mean I don't like them, it just means I don't know anything about them. Right. So, don't need to. You okay. got us. It's all good. A um, couple questions. Uh, how long have you lived in your house? Um, we bought the property in 2006, five. Okay. And this barn, I'm assuming, was there when you purchased the property? Yes. And it has, has it been modified um, during no, that period prior no, it to it? It had not been occupied. It had not been occupied. Okay, great. And I pulled up a satellite image just of the property because yep, I'm trying to visualize to. what you're saying. And uh, I'm assuming the barn is currently, according to Google, is has a red top to it. It Correct. looks like there are trees on the back side Correct. of it. I'm assuming those trees currently reside on your property? Yeah, those are my trees. However, okay. the, the trees on this on this satellite view are pretty, um, I don't know when this was taken, but. They've changed. Correct. That's okay. Um, which, where's your house? My house is, okay. We're we'll looking at the same image I would venture to See guess. the red barn? Yes, ma'am. That is my house. Okay, perfect. It is really close. Yep, that, and that's what I needed to clarify. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. This time we'd like to invite the applicant back up for any rebuttal or any closing statement. stalls and the height of the barn requirements. Um, the, I guess I'd like to address the, the, the height requirement. Part of the reason we want to build the new barn with the code is it's a code issue, but it's also the fact that the stalls are currently only eight feet high. Um, and we try to let, that's dangerous for the horses, especially our horses. If they rear up, they'll hit their head in the ceiling and get injured, which is why we want to get to make it 10 feet high. Um, so we would ask for it to be um, a little higher um, with the roof structure. Now, one way to do it is to partially um, dig into the ground a little bit because it slopes down, so we're rotating the barn and we'll be able to drop the elevation of the floor a foot or two. Um, but I think the, the way we'd like to structure it and one of the reasons we want to rebuild the barn is to give a little more height for the horses, which might result in a slightly higher roof than it is today. Um, there's nowhere close to that height of roof that yours is. And 10 foot ceiling. Well, no, no, I understand that. I'm just saying we're not looking at building this monstrosity or anything. Um, okay. Just some something that's safe for the horses and will look nice. I don't know um, with that. I just, sir, I'm sorry. Can you just can sorry. we just if, let's just focus. Um, so I'd like to, uh, you know, we, we'd like to have the ability to um, design a roof that's potentially slightly higher than it is today. I don't know exactly what the dimensions would be. But but sir, we're talking about. She said total height of the structure is 25 feet, right? No, the distance from the property line is 25 thought, feet. Oh, that was a 25 feet. Okay. She, wants, so she, she said she how, doesn't want the height is, of the structure to be how higher. How tall is the barn right now? I don't know. It's, it's, it's um, more than 10 feet tall. Though. Yeah, it's eight foot ceilings and then. So the question is, do you think you'd get a 10 foot stall within the current height of the building? With room for the hay and foot, or right. shaving above it. Right, That's I mean, it, it, I mean, I don't have a scale on this drawing, but I mean, it's what would you guess at how high would you guess it is? I, I don't know. But the, the real issue is, I'm not sure people really understand what the height of anything is anyway. I mean, when you're looking at it from a distance, I'm not sure you're going to be able to tell if it's 32 feet or 41 foot. Um, I mean, you get to a certain point where it, uh, you know, I, I, of course, I don't want you to have a 12 story structure here. But whatever the city's code is, I'm sure, takes that into account, um, whatever that minimum height is. Um, so, ma'am, you didn't want the total height of the barn to be any higher than it already is. Is that, is that what you're saying? Okay. okay. Yeah, but that's part of the problem he's having right. with the horses right. now. Yeah, I just don't because know. Because the struct, the you way it's designed that, is not right. Two, if you could eat that two feet somewhere and, and that. Well, but the, the problem is the structure yeah. is not right on the sides. You can't slope it down like they've got it show. Right. That's that's nice picture, but that's not the way you really do horse barn. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, okay. so. Some of the stuff, the ma'am, the city will make those decisions, not us. We, they're, they're the ones that are going to come out and say you've got to have this many feet between here and here. So we won't, we don't get to actually make that one. Right. So go ahead, sir. Okay. So I guess we'll just wait on that piece for the permit process. So what we're saying is it could be an additional two feet taller than it already is. It's up to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Let's we're just, it's a possibility. Yeah, we're just Ms. we Ms. either approve yeah. or deny, and they determine right. where. Yeah. Let's right. let's. Mr. Chairman, are we done with the applicant? Maybe let's um, just, he wants to address. The oh, yeah. There's yeah. two yeah. other. Okay, I'm sorry, sir. Um, the set the set the second topic was the minimum of three stalls. I think what you're really trying to say is three horses. Um, you know, the way we we're hoping to have it was the current barn that's there today is four stalls. We'd like to build a four stall barn as well. Our intention is not to actually have horses horses on the property long term, but we have. An older horse that has cancer, and we'd like to bring him on the property as well. Um, once he passes, we don't have any intention of bringing another horse on the property. So, in the short term, we'd like to have the ability to have four, but long term, it'd be two to three. Um, so, that's you know, one part we potentially would like is to have the ability to, to have a horse on the barn. And then, uh, the last thing around the, the, the privacy trees, I feel like we're both, we both want the privacy there, we both want the screening there. Um, we're fine with the $2,000 limit if that's what we need to do um, and put you know sufficient trees in there that will break up the, the property. I hope that'll help with the height issue over the years too. So. Thank you. Any questions? Who staff from the board? At this time we'd like to close the public hearing the floor is open for a motion. Yes sir. I'd like to make a motion for approval of V12-017. This is to allow a barn to be located within 25 feet from the rear property line um, with the conditions being um, to add a mixture of uh, evergreens between the barn and the eastern property line, planting to be approved by the city arborist at a maximum cost of $2,000. And then number two, that the new barn shall be a maximum dimension of 44 by 44. And number three, the color shall be uh, the color of the barn shall be similar in uh, characteristics to the existing home. We have a second. I, I don't have to do anything because it makes mention that it's 25 feet from the property line is what the original thing is so I don't have to make reference to it I I mean it would show the location of the property yeah. okay um, okay number four that the barn shall be located in generally the same location as the existing barn um, uh, with the with dimension no closer than 25 feet from the uh, rear property line The reference to the plat is uh, from below Reese for Tony Moore, dated June 28, 2012. We have a second. I'll second. We have a motion to approve in a second. Could, uh, I'd like to actually make an amendment. Um, and this was for the applicant's request as well as it was offered by the um, the applicant as well as the neighbor and that was that uh, the condition that there's no storage between the barn and the property line and I think part of that will be achieved by the plantings but just to make it crystal clear that there should be no storage between the barn and the, and the neighbor's property line as an amendment do we have a second I'll second again if I can you can we have amendment and a second to but I never uh, this situation there's a motion to amend which we'll vote on first okay do I have to agree to that or no, no. doesn't matter no. okay we have amendment 
and a second to add an additional recommendation that is that there will be no storage between the 25 feet between the property line and the barn any discussion I guess the only discussion I would have is that again I'm not sure what they would store out there but uh, again if it's going to be screened I don't see why there's an issue with this with the with the issue on storage I mean I don't think they're going to put an RV back there or maybe a horse trailer but um, I mean, but, I, but I think it's recognizing the neighbors concerns that it's not going to harm what's trying to be achieved here so I don't but but I'm not sure I've asked staff is there a code requirement that says you can't store things within so many feet of a property line as long as it's not construction equipment there's right or or a trailer or something else I mean there's city code that governs that I'm not sure I necessarily I'm looking to try to rewrite the city code on every piece of property I offered it for two reasons as I stated one is the applicant offered it in their own application and the neighbor equity it as a concern just to make it crystal clear for both parties but that's a restriction of use as a condition of for approval let, let me let me ask a question just to, to Walt's point counselor mm -hmm. are we do is there any harm or is there any risk if we add that as an amendment I mean oh. no to city code or e even if you were adding a restriction you are allowed to add additional restrictions beyond what the city might require okay. as part of your conditions for granting it any other discussion on the amendment lastly uh, on storage what what does storage mean I mean then you get into definition of what what things are you limiting it to if it's a, is it a pitchfork is it a is you know what are we what are we storing I guess is so I, I just I, I just say sometimes we open up things in their city law and I'm not an expert on everything in the city law but let them be the ones who govern it and uh, I'll yeah. stay out of their business so that's, the, that's the only thing I say I understand what the if I had a neighbor I'd agree to whatever the neighbor said because I want to be good neighbors I don't have to live next to them um, but uh, I don't but they do so they're going to agree to whatever they can to make sure they have good neighbors so uh, any other discussion all in favor of the amendment which would be a, an additional recommended condition that there be no storage between in the 25 feet between the property line and the barn please raise your right hand Opposed, same side did you vote? Nancy? Yes, I did. Yeah. Four. Four. It passed six to one. So who seconded the amendment? I did. Jim. That's right. Jim did. That's right. I did. That makes so <laughs> we have a, a motion and a second to a, allow a barn to be located 25 feet from the rear property line with the following conditions. Add a mix of evergreens between the barn and the eastern property line. Plannings to be approved by the city, city arborist at a maximum cost of two thousand dollars number two the barn shall be a maximum of 44 by 44 number three colors shall be similar to the existing home colors and number four the barn, sh barn shall be located as per plat no more than 25 feet of the rear property line uh, by the Brumbelow and Reese uh, date of 628 2012 all in favor raise your right hand oppose same sign congratulations good luck keep talking as neighbors please please yeah. <laughs> I think it doesn't matter Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes, ma'am. And the and the existing barn was only 32 feet from the property line. So really, what we did is we moved it seven feet closer at a maximum. Okay.
Oh, trust me, we know. That's a good. That's a good point. <laughs> we understand. Good point. Right, but it point. didn't sound like you were objecting to it, so I we felt like you. Yeah, the process. city won't allow something like that. Yeah. See, that, that, that's not for us to decide. Yeah. The city will handle all that. That's their design review and yeah. the building permit process. Yeah, yeah they have yeah, we, to we submit that, too. All, all, all we were approving was the 25 feet. So they're still, they yeah. still have to go through some more. It'll work out. It, yeah. It'll be There good. you go. Thank you all very much. Okay. Have a great Thank night. You. Thank you. of officers. Officers. The office of chair is open if anybody would like to make a nomination. I nominate Dr. Willis. Thank you, sir. I'll Thank second you. that. Thank you. I'll third it. I'll third it. <laughs> I'll third it. We, we just don't want to do it. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, <laughs> same side. Vice chair. For vice chair, yeah. Who's been vice chair already? Wall. Wall has. I've been before. Yeah. Can they be vice chair again? Yeah. Sure. We have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing. Good. Fine with me. Somebody just make I, a motion. I nominate Wall. I second. Third. Any other nominations? Did you win one? Yeah, so it's okay. All in favor, raise your right hand. Did you want it? No, I'm saying, does he want it? Yeah, All the same okay. side. Uh, All right. he, he likes it for his resume. It's a resume. I'd like to, I'd like to make a motion. What? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Oh. Yay, yay. Okay. What? I'd like to second it, too. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no discussion. By golly. By golly. Oh. Second it. Uh, Point of order. order.
from uh, uh, DRB. Thank <laughs> you.